Hey guys, how's it going? Chess back again with another episode of the AC Milan Career Mode here on Xbox One. It's another live commentary and it's just going to be a season roundup from this first season at AC Milan. We'll have a look at the tables, have a look at the top scorer charts, the assist makers. We'll do a squad report as well, see how everyone in the team is progressing. And also we'll have a look around Europe and see how the, uh, the other major leagues in Europe ended up turning out. But of course, we, uh, there's actually one thing I want to cover before we get into this. Oh, in the comment section of yesterday's video, which was the live cup final against Juventus, a uh, result of which I won't spoil if you want to check it out, there's an annotation in the bottom left-hand side of your screen, or feel free to check the channel page. But in the comment section of uh, that particular video, there was a few people asking for me to sack off this AC Milan career mode now after one season and go back to the Chelsea career mode that we were doing uh, a lot earlier on in the year. Now, uh, basically, uh, this is going to be uh, kind of addressing those guys, as well as those of you that are newer to the channel, and, uh, you know, aren't necessarily familiar with the Chelsea career mode that I did earlier on in the year. I'm going to stick with this AC Milan career mode for the time being. We're going to do at least two seasons here at AC Milan. I'm really enjoying making it. It's been going down phenomenally well, and you guys have been showing it fantastic support throughout. So if you could continue to do that for the foreseeable future throughout this next second season, and then that would be absolutely wonderful. And then we'll see where we are at the end of the second season and reassess again. But those of you that are very, very keen on the Chelsea career mode, do not fret. I guarantee you 100% I will be going back to the Chelsea career mode before FIFA 15. We will continue that career mode, carry on from the third season onwards before the end of this particular game, particular game's life cycle. Don't fret. So... With that said, let's crack on with the season review, shall we? We'll have a quick look at the league table to see how things ended up all round in uh, not only just in the domestic competitions, but in Europe as well. As you can see, Juventus did end up winning the league. We finished second and Roma came a distant third. So it's the three of us that qualify for next year's Champions League. Napoli and Inter Milan both qualify for the Europa League. Unfortunately, we're going to lose Hellas Verona, Sassuolo and Bologna. I'm not too sure who's going to be coming up from Serie B because apparently I, uh, I can't check to, uh, to see which teams might be coming up, unfortunately. But we lose in Bologna, Sassuolo and Hellas Verona, which is disappointing because, to be fair, they were nine guaranteed points, or 18 guaranteed points, really, to be completely honest. But hopefully the teams that come up aren't necessarily quite as good. Uh, that kind of spoils yesterday's video, if you haven't seen it already. But we, of course, did lose the Coppa Nazionale final yesterday, 2-0 to Juventus. The Champions League has been won by FC Barcelona on penalties 5-4 after a Classico final. That must have been one hell of a game to watch. Just unbelievable. Yesterday, uh, in real life, or today as I'm recording this, there's the Copa del Rey final, which is, of course, a Classico as well. So I'm hoping, perhaps, for uh, for a game that looks as if it was quite as exciting as that one. Maybe, even, we'll have the same turnout with Barcelona winning on penalties. We'll have to wait and see. Of course, by the time you see this, you'll already know. But uh, Spurs win the Europa League as well. Again on penalties, 5-4 after a 1-1 draw against Marseille. Tottenham Hotspur winning a European trophy. What is the world coming to? Of course, the uh, the World Cup is about to start in-game, but uh, England's group is England, Northern Ireland, Australia and Chile. Of course, it hasn't started as of yet, and it will be running on in the background as we head into uh, the second season. Um, I'm not going to, uh, to be taking a national team through the World Cup this particular time, because we have done in uh, the past two career modes we've done. But uh, we'll have a look at the top goal scorers, Carlos Tevez and Cuadrados, surprisingly, for Fiorentina. Both head the lineup for uh, the top goal scorers. Our very own Mario Balotelli sat there third on 17 goals. He had a phenomenal season for us. He really, really did. But uh, let's have a quick look a little bit further down. Is there anyone else? Lacazette got 10. That's pleasing to see. The fact that our second top goal scorer was our, in fact, new signing. And uh, assist makers... Uh, where is our first guy? Lacazette again, 13th. So that's very, very good. He's had a fantastic first season. Polly there with five. But Centurion, the top uh, assist maker with 10. And Tevez, again, second in this one. And Quadrado, both on nine. They must have both had phenomenal seasons. Clean seats. Guita managed to pick up 12. That's pleasing as well, actually. But uh, this is kind of going on a little bit longer than I wanted it to so far. So let's jump out of here, this uh, particular section, if I can drop back. Uh, we'll have a quick look at the other leagues. And there's one thing I want to uh, have a quick look at finance-wise, because I've been led to believe that uh, I can actually do something to maintain or re retain the uh, the money that we currently have. But Chelsea have won the Barclays Premier League. That is 
fantastic. Even though we're not manager there at this present moment in time, they have managed to run out Premier League winners. Five points clear of Jeeps. Liverpool, Manchester City and Man United all finish on 83 points. That's phenomenal. So... Chelsea, City, Liverpool and Man United all qualify for the Champions League. Arsenal and Spurs qualify for the Europa League. Of course, Spurs won the Europa League, so they'll have qualified regardless. But uh, that's how the uh, the English League finished. Pleased to see Chelsea win. Marseille win the League 1 or League 1. Uh, PSG finishing second in that league. That's a big turn up for the books. Marseille by two points. St Etienne and Monaco third and fourth. Germany, as you might expect. FC Bayern München finished top of the league by five points ahead of Borussia Dortmund. Schalke 04 and uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach finished third and fourth. Mönchengladbach sneaking into the Champions League ahead of Bayer Leverkusen. That is a big turn up for the books. Obviously, Italy we know already. Let's have a quick score round to Spain. Ajax win the Dutch league, which is again probably unsurprising. Benfica, Porto, and Sporting Lisbon finished the top three in uh, Portugal again. Pretty unsurprising, although Benfica beating Porto to the league title by four points. Both only losing one game all season long is very impressive. CSK Moscow win at the. Uh, Win the the Russian league, Celtic win the Spanish the, the Spanish win the Scottish league, unsurprisingly. And Real Madrid, Atletico, and Barcelona all have the chance to win with one game remaining in La Liga. It's kind of weird. we're in June now, beginning of June. It's kind of odd that they haven't finished this season yet. But Madrid sit two points clear, so you'd have to say it's probably them that are going to get the title. The Atleti and Barcelona both in with a shout should they both win at their final games. But let's back out of the league screen. That's how the uh, the situation is across Europe right now. Now the one thing I wanted to have. A quick look at was in the transfers or transfer budget because I've been led to believe that of course you lose you know we've got 18 million sat there and uh, we'll lose that going into the next season because we'll just be given a fresh budget but I've been told if I transfer this all across to the wage budget it actually comes across with us so I'm going to test that out let me know in the comment section down below if I'm right or wrong with that but uh, 367,000 pounds worth of wage budget is what we have currently then if we do that hopefully that works um, we'll have to find out I guess but let's have a quick look at the squad report then to round out this end of season one review first of all well not first off but I just want to say thank you very much to you guys for the phenomenal support you've shown the channel recently we're closing in on 8,000 subscribers now we may hit that either today or tomorrow as you're seeing this definitely before the weekend you would have thought which is just absolutely superb so thank you very much for that like I say we are going to head into a second season on this AC Milan career mode, so please do continue to show it some amazing support that you have been throughout this first season. That would be just phenomenal. I cannot underestimate, you cannot underestimate how much I appreciate your guys' support, because we get fantastic views, likes, comments, subscription growth, etc., on all of the series we do right now. It's just been phenomenal. For a channel my size, we're doing very, very well, especially for a channel that's career mode only, and it is all down to you guys. So uh, I am very, very grateful, believe you me. But let's have a look at the squad report. Have a look at the uh, the actual stats and then the uh, the physical attributes. As you can see, Guita goes up three overall and his uh, reflexes, positioning and diving go up three and four respectively as well. So that's very, very pleasing. He's had a decent season for us. 16 clean sheets in all competitions. Very, very good addition to the squad. Abate, unfortunately, only goes up one overall and doesn't really progress too much when it comes to, uh, to individual stats. But Benucci was the player we brought in in January from Juventus. He's done very well and he played 28 games for us total oh, that's surprising didn't think he played that much but he's judging by his average rating and the fact he's got 14 clean seats picked up a couple of goals as well he's done very very well for us not really progressing too much stat wise but has gone up one overall Victor Ruiz has been doing very well I'm extremely pleased with how well he's been doing since he came in as you can see up four overall and his individual stats are rocketing especially in the uh, the crucial areas that you might say for uh, for a centre back strength sliding tackle standing tackle uh, heading accuracy etc unfortunately his jumping hasn't gone up but doesn't matter. Hopefully that will continue to go up in the foreseeable future. Mate, Mattia De Chilio, a player that we did have at Chelsea in the Chelsea career, but he didn't progress as well as this. Obviously he's seen more first-team football at AC Milan than he did at Chelsea. Look at those in-game stats. Really progressing very, very nicely indeed. Some phenom some amazing... Oh, I say phenomenal all the time, don't I? Some amazing growth there for uh, a player or for just one season so far. For a player that's only 21, that's fantastic. Ricardo Montalivo, not sure whether he'll be staying at the club. We may replace him with a couple of players I've got in mind that will cover more in the first episode of the second season which will come to you tomorrow but uh, thinking about replacing Ricardo Montalivo Andrea Polly's done very well for us this season although his in-game stats haven't gone up that much I've been very very impressed with him been fantastic to have him in the team 78 overall now up two 
Uh, Senad Lulic, not really progressing how we may have liked him to, although he has been quite instrumental. Five goals, six assists in uh, his game so far this season. His place in the squad is under threat. We'll have to wait and see if we get any offers in for him. A place that is also under threat is Kozuki Honda, although he has he did have a very, very good second half of the season, so I might keep him for uh, the time being. Ten goals, six assists for him. So uh, he's had a good season, actually. I will I will give him the credit that he deserves. Stefan El Sharawi definitely stepped up in the second half of this season. We still need more from him, though, if he's to stay at the club. But he is, as it says on screen, an exciting prospect. So he probably will stay at the club for the foreseeable future. Five goals, five assists. And uh, some OK growth in-game stats-wise, but uh, not the best. Mario Balotelli definitely has grown well in-game stats-wise. 86 rated overall now, up to... Some of the stats have gone up phenomenally well, although he's... I said phenomenally again, didn't I? Although his uh, physical stats haven't quite improved as much as you might like them to. Uh, 24 goals overall in all competitions in 35 games. Without shadow of doubt, our best player right now. Valued at £32 million. He's been very, very good indeed. Giovanni Dos Santos, although not growing, has had a decent impact since he came in. Three goals, two assists. Uh, Erby Emanuelson, again, not had too much first-team football, but still one goal, one assist in 16 games. Good squad rotation player. As you can see, by the average rating, he has definitely performed when he's come in. Abu Diaby, again, a good squad rotation player for £2.8 million. Pounds. You can't really complain. And he's made some, uh, some OK average improvements. Uh, in-game stat-wise, but overall he's gone up too, so can't complain. Alexander Lacazette, definitely a fantastic player for us. Coming in for uh, for £6.5 million pounds from Leon. really, really pleased with how he's done since he came in in just January. He only came in in January, we haven't had him for a full season yet. Although his overall rating isn't as high as it could be, still 13 goals and 6 assists in 33 games isn't to be sneered at, and he's gone up overall by 2 as well. Adam Jajic, 4 goals, 1 assist, not bad for £2 million pounds plus uh, Kaká, not progressed overall or in-game either yet, but he should have some decent potential. Adel Rami is on loan. We'll be going back to Ace. We'll be going back to Valencia rather, so we will be losing him. Uh, Nigel De Jong really actually been very impressed with Nigel De Jong throughout the season, uh, even though his uh, average performance doesn't show that. 24 games, one goal, three assists. Uh, I've that one goal was crucial, by the way, as well, wasn't it? It was that winner against Roma, so he's definitely had a decent season. Brian Cristante will be leaving the club if I can possibly shift him on during this uh, next summer transfer window. Not been playing at all. Same with Sapanara, again, another player that I would like to move on, if possible, not having as much of an influence on the first team as he perhaps could have done. Adel Tarrapt, again, it's 6.4 rating overall, but I've been... I enjoyed playing with Adel Tarrapt, and he's progressed quite nicely, although he will be going back to QPR on loan, not Fulham, as I accidentally said in the live com yesterday. Christian Zapata will be staying at the club, but only on, only on a rotation basis, you'd have to say. Benucci and Victor Ruiz are definitely our starting two centre-backs right now, and we will be looking to bring a new centre-back into the club. Kevin Constance had a decent amount of first-team football, but not too much, not really progressing much either. Uh, Christian Abiati will be leaving the club, retiring at the end of the season, as you can see, so we will be needing a new goalkeeper by uh, the start of next season. Matthias Silvestra, again, on loan, not really had too much of a, an influence on the first team, although he did pick up a couple of goals, and uh, will be returning to a fellow Milan side Inter in uh, the next summer window. Rubinho, not progressed, but scored six goals and picked up three assists in, uh, in all competitions. If he moves on, he moves on in the summer. I'm not necessarily overly keen on keeping him, and if an offer comes in, he will be moving on and leaving us. Uh, Sonny Montari, I enjoy playing with him, actually, even though, again, the uh, the overall stats don't show that. And uh, Notcherino will be returning to us from on loan at Ace, uh, West Ham, rather. So uh, hopefully he can do a, ro do a, a role for us in the squad. Nice all-rounded stats there, to be completely honest. So hopefully he can be, good, be a good rotation player. Alessandro Matri out on loan at Fiorentina will be replaced when he comes back to the club. He'll be sold on. Didac, not sure whether or what I'll be doing with him yet. He's progressing quite nicely as a left-back. But... Um, in key stats, you would say acceleration and sprint speed is not that high. Maybe we'll give him some rotation periods or rotation play during the uh, the preseason. We'll have to wait and see. Niang, again, not progressing as you might like him to, although he's only 19. Maybe I'll send him back out on loan, to be completely honest. Jamaria Komi will be leaving the club if I can move him on. Same with Marco Fassati as well, even though he's progressing quite nicely. 21 years old, only 70 rated, not going to uh, make any influence on the first team. Same with uh, Vergara as well. Again, progressing nicely, but not going to have any influence. Kingsley Boateng, going to try and move him out permanently if we can. Same with Copper, same with Simic. Actually, Simic, considering these guys are 18 and 19, I may send these guys back out on loan again if we possibly can. Gabriel, uh, I don't know what to do with him. He's only 21, but he's 68 rated. 
So uh, perhaps he'll move on, perhaps he won't. We'll have to wait and see. But the start of the second season will be tomorrow. But that's going to bring this season round up to a close, guys. Please do feel free to leave the video a like if it could be so kind. That would be absolutely superb. Of course, there will be a My Player episode for you later on tonight. So do be sure to check your sub boxes and or subscribe if you aren't already so you don't miss out on it. There was another episode of the World Cup sticker book collection last night. So uh, do feel free to... I say do feel free a lot as well, I don't know. I'm kind of set in my ways when it comes to phrases and, uh, and words that I like to say when I'm commentating but the um, the uh, the second episode of uh, the sticker book collection went up last night so check the channel page for that if you missed it first one went down phenomenally well I'm recording this before it's gone live so hopefully that goes down as well as the first one did and uh, this is getting quite long now so I'm going to end it here thank you very much for watching guys and I will see you next time